Hey YouTube, PD Two Finger talking about the 556. This is a chip I got from my brother, Ray old Radio Shack chip. It's called a Archer Electronic Parts Phase Lock Loop Voltage Controlled Oscillator RS566 276 uh, So yeah, this is an LM566, which is a voltage controlled oscillator chip. They don't make this anymore and it's not cheap. You can get them for around seven to ten dollars on eBay. Anyway, I got one. I would, man, I wish I would have had a box of them. But um, I had tested this before and my notes on it were really vague. They It said CDS 4.7K point 0047 microfarad 047 microfarad then it says works with one uf one microfarad needs amp and i'm guessing what i meant by that was like with the dino segovis oscillator slide synth with a 555 chip see this is a 556 566 and uh, so that would maybe tend to make me think that this is similar, like uh, to a 555, like this is the version of that that puts out not just a square wave, but also a triangle wave, which is very appealing to me. I, I love little oscillators. Those are really fun. For me, the idea of a wonderful project would be an attractive box with a small oscillator circuit, then maybe a PT2399 uh, echo circuit, and then a way to vary the oscillator. I really like Dino Segovis slider synth where you have a, a tube like a antenna and inside of that you put a cadmium sulfide or photoresistor on one side and then you have a another tube a smaller tube that slides very nicely inside of there and you attach an LED on that uh, second tube and when you slide the LED towards the CDS sensor you can get what uh, amounts to be a electric slide whistle and it's smooth and it uh, raises the pitch in a controllable fashion that you can actually kind of play it. You can play, I learned how to kind of play Happy Birthday on it and I can kind of play uh, the theme from Star Trek. So they're very cool little uh, slide synth is a very cool little project. You could make a little handheld one, make them a little larger, uh, and then to try to control the LED, uh, there's different things you can do pulsing the LED to provide vibrato. So it's, it's neat. Um, it's a neat little circuit. Uh, that's what I'm playing, working on here. I've got this trapezoid-shaped box, cigar box, with a, a kind of a large, heavy magnet uh, subwoofer speaker. And I mounted that in there today in the center of that box, and I built a punch amp, which is 7052, TDA 7052. It's just, you could think of it like a noisy cricket or a ruby except that uh, they're unbelievably superior. Way, 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 way better. It's twice as powerful, burns uh, the same, about the same amount of current, you know, uh, but there isn't any unwanted noise and it's twice as powerful. So it's just a way better. If you've, if you've ever really spent time with LM8386 amps and you you like to play clean, you don't like a ton of distortion on your amp that you can't get rid of. Maybe you'll be like me, but if you're like 
CB Giddy or something like those guys that love those things. I don't know. I always had a real nasty kind of artifact on the release. So yeah, this is the diagram that you need to look up. That's it. This is how you get the 566 chip to oscillate. You, uh, off of pin 3 you'll get a square wave. Off of pin 4 you'll get a triangle wave. So it's a uh, 0 0.04 microfarad capacitor coming off of leg 7 to ground. Leg 5, uh, you have a variable resistor or something around 10k, and I'm going to try to uh, hoodle up a CDS cell in there. That'll be this will be the uh, Huji, the the slider synth idea, and then there's another uh, 0 0.0047 microfarad. I did not I did not mark the that's a 4.7 4.7 K resistor so yeah the 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 dealio the story here with this my brother gave me the chip and I went off of my notes on the back of it and then the diagram that, that Radio Shack supplies is pretty basic. And I was unable to get it to uh, produce a tone tonight. Uh, uh, I had researched it on my, my first try where I had more time. And I had figured out the actual model number and found this. I had put it on a breadboard and got it to actually produce a tone. And it, it uh, it's a cool chip. I mean, like normally for me, I I started out playing around with five 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 chips to to use them as oscillators, and they produce a square wave. And when you get down into the lower frequencies, they start going. Bup, 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 bup. And I, I don't like that. I like when it... Uh, where it's, it's singing and it's oscillating and it's a triangle wave, a sine wave, something like that. So I only have one of these chips. I'm going to be playing around with it. It's going to go into this trapezoid-shaped box with the subwoofer speaker in it with a power supply. It'll probably end up having, well, we know for sure it's going to have a an echo. So we'll build the crap phi delay is the small Vero layout for a PT2399 echo chip. That's the one that I like to build, the crap phi delay. It's uh, the smallest layout that I know for the PT2399 that works. So we'll build one of those. Um, hopefully get it running off a single power supply. This chip, I'm not sure if it's, it says 10 volts on the package. So it may end up with some shenanigans where I'm running a couple of uh, 9 volt batteries in it or I don't know what I'll do. You never know what I'll do as far as the power supply goes. And it'll have the tube in there so you can slide this thing. It's basically going to uh, produce a high pitch with an echo. And maybe I'll, maybe I've got these uh, uh, five, six, seven tone decoder ICs, the CMOS versions that are. Uh, more challenging to find than not than the, the normal version. There's two different versions of that chip, I think, the LM567, and there's a thing where you can only build the cheap low parts count uh, ring mod with this certain type of chip. And it was always a thing in DIY where people would buy the wrong chip. I've got a bunch of those, and I've never built one. 
I've never built this ring modulator. So uh, this is probably going to be it. This is probably going to be the time. Will I do a blinky circuit and get vibrato on the LED? Probably not. I've done that before. This time I'm probably going to try the ring mod. Whether it ends up in there or not, we'll see. This is another collection of circuits going into a singular chassis. Another noisemaker, little noisemaker device for me. Um, I built a magnetic sine wave theremin. I have that here. It's an antenna device. And you can see that on... Oh boy, I can't remember the name of the song. It's our tribute to... Uh, hey, honey? Yeah? What was the name of that movie, Cybercore? With the hands, vibrations. Something like that. Anamika sent me here. <laughs> it's this movie with the blonde. Christina Applegate. Christina Applegate's in this movie. I think it's called. I think it's called Vibrations. Cybercore. It's uh, it's one of these so good. It's bad movies. It's a guy who he's a he's a musician and he gets his hands cut off and he comes back he's a guitar player he comes back and they build him a cyber suit with robotic hands and he plays techno and he meets he's like he he basically he's got this girlfriend and he gets his hands cut off and he freaks out and goes into this depression and she's like get out of here you creep you don't have hands anymore and then he starts drinking. He's drinking this night ship liquor. <laughs> he lives in a cardboard box. Then he comes back and he meets Anamika, who is, is Christina Applegate. And they kind of live in this, it's like a weird commune house. There's like a hacker guy. There's one guy who plays a synth. He's like kind of obnoxious. And there's a scene in there where he uh, explains to this guy about techno. And he's playing a demo from a synthesizer. And he's like doing this rap, this spiel about techno music. And it's like one of the most horrible things. They pretty much, it's like a DIY house where they're throwing raves and there's like apple juice hut. The Christina Applegate, she's like selling like healthy drinks, and there's some bad promoter in it. The guy, the guy with his hands cut off, his dad's a cop, and they uh, these guys it was these guys bad guys that they were like alcoholics. They like got him and dropped a. They used a crane and they dropped uh, like a house on his car, and he had his hands on the dash, and that's why they got cut off. So then at the end of the movie, he comes out, Cybercore, he's got his suit on, Vibrations, he's got his suit on, and it's connected to the uh, MIDI, so he like does a dance, and he just moves his fingers, and the music plays. It's, it's this movie <laughs> is awesome. It's called Vibrations, a.k.a. Cyberstorm, I think is the name of the movie. And we did a song, we called it Cybercore, and I, Night Train, that was the name of the song. Night, Night Ship. Night Ship. I, I, yeah, I yeah the guy, he drinks this liquor called Night Ship, like Night Train, but it's Night Ship. And uh, I made the video, like basically if you, if you're a fan of the movie, and then you watch our live version of this song, I edited clips from the movie in there, and uh, it's my my take on it. It's my we do an homage to Vibrations, aka Cyberstorm, and in that video we use the magnetic theremin uh, that I built, the actual sine wave. It's it's got an echo on it. It's built uh, built into a cigar box with the uh, I used some slide controls for the delay time. 
It's a really cool theremin. Like I said, I've built a real theremin. Sine wave with a built-in echo in it. Uh, runs off of 9 volts. It's got antennas that you screw on it. The thing is awesome. So I, when I say I play around with little oscillators, I, I've done a lot of it. And I don't want you to think this is my first foray away from square waves. I've played around with the XR2206. I've built a bunch of sine wave circuits that sing, that, that are they're beautiful, you know. Take a look at uh, the Newt case souk. Uh, take a look at the bad idea. There's some pretty impressive stuff that I've built. Anyway, uh, this one is going to be fun. This chip was a pain in the ass because I didn't realize uh, what the model number was. It's a LM566CN. So that's the old Radio Shack chip and you need to find if I don't if I do not use this chip on this build I may I may not use it I may go with the XR2206 we ordered another uh, kit today they sell these kits for a uh, signal generator and it comes with the chip and the PCB and they're uh, they're like five bucks, you know. And that chip is an expensive chip. The XR twenty two hundred six is not cheap. So uh, getting the whole thing for five bucks is a deal with a PCB because there's no Vero layout, and I I haven't taught myself how to do that yet. So uh, the easiest way for me to do it is to pay for the PCB, and in this case you get the whole kit. So I would be building it, building it out, and then in place of a pot, I would be wiring in the uh, cadmium sulfide cell for the slide scent. And then sending the output to the uh, ring mod, which would be bypassable, and then into the uh, Huji, the echo, and then to the punch amp, the 7052A, and then out to the speaker. So that's what's on the menu. That We just ordered that stuff today. I'm going to start working on some of it uh, in between while we're waiting for parts to arrive like we can uh, go ahead and build the, the Echo PCB. But this is kind of like I'm getting way ahead of myself. This was this tonight was a uh, it was just a step in the right direction of planning the project out in my head mentally. Um, I've had that chassis and the speaker sitting in it for the longest time. It's like you need to, typically every year I will do one like noise type of build. So that's it. That's going to be later on, more like fall or winter, more than likely. And the reason I wanted to uh, hold this up in this video is because the part, the chip it doesn't ha it has weird part numbers on it and there really isn't a part number on this what i need to do is write lm566 cm there you go pd and see i didn't even need to make the video all right you guys that's my plan for the mystic spirit box that's going to be the name of this thing uh it's a line from a movie with leslie nelson uh, the dad pulls out a ouija board and says okay kids it's time to play with the mystic spirit board and he asks he asked this ouija board some question about uh ted kennedy at chappaquiddick and the Ouija thing flies across the room and knocks a model car into a fish tank. And I... <laughs> it's, the movie's not even that funny, but I that scene, I just the way that Dad said that, okay, kids, it's time to play with the Mystic Spirit Board. 
I could not stop laughing at that. So I'm going to call, because this basically with this thing, like I said, you have this rod that you can move, and you can do a perfect ghosty, like a, ooh, that kind of like 50s theremin sound. You could do a perfect, because uh, it's, I mean, it's a sine wave, and you can, you can kind of uh, warble it. What's even better is if you have the blinky LED. And you could just have the LFO in there, you know, and you can you can smooth that out, kind of, uh, with a with a cap. I've done it before. I've I've been through all this. I did it with the new Kaisuk has that on there. So, yeah, that's the plan. And uh, I wanted to document this about that chip because I don't know I, until I hear this thing. I mean, it runs off of 10 volts. I'd like to use it. It's this special thing, you know. But at the same time, I don't know how it's going to perform. And I know how the XR2206 works. So I'm thinking, well, there's a chance that I'm going to end up putting this chip back in this blister pack. It's going to go back in my thing of chips. And then I'm going to have to go through this process again of figuring all this out which takes time so now I made a video on it see how I work uh -oh. anyway I hope you guys enjoy this content I know it's just me going on and on and on for uh, way more than I need to wish me luck with this trigger point thing tomorrow and um, he he pokes on my back with his thumbs right at the spot where it hurts the most, which is basically just below my belt line. On my lower back, there's like two like nubs sticking out of my, like where my butt bone comes up or something. And that's where the epicenter of the pain is. So then he, he takes a giant needle and sticks it in there and power shoots this whole big bottle of steroids in there. And it, I can't tell you how bad it hurts. It really, really, really hurts. It's, it's incredible. It's incredible how much this hurts. I scream so loud that dust comes down from the, uh, like the, the light fixture, the fluorescent lights in the doctor's office. All this dust. I mean, it was like echo. It, when I got done yelling, you could hear it echoing out in the building. <laughs> it was so loud. And my poor wife, you know, she was in there. She, and, like, I looked over at her, and she was going like, oh, like, she didn't, want to, she didn't want to hear her old man screaming like a, you know. So, anyway, I got, that's what I got look, to look forward to for tomorrow. Uh, go to the pain clinic, get that shot, and then it'll be a real lot of pain. Uh, like, the lidocaine wears off. There is lidocaine in the shot, but he doesn't wait. He just does it. He said, yeah, you don't want to be a sissy. I got a Lithuanian old world doctor. He's great, Dr. Gervasiak. He just, oh yeah, you don't want to be a sissy. Just get the medicine in there and let it do its job. <laughs> so he just, bam, jams it in there. And uh, so I'll be in for, you know, usually it's about three days of it really hurting from the, from the injection. And then you all of a sudden you get a little bit of relief and and it's not as bad. So I'm really hoping that I get some relief. I haven't had a trigger point injection in the longest time and I really need some pain relief. It's it's been horrible and with me doing this work lately, it's just I've been I can't tell you how much I've been suffering. It sucks. So this stuff, the electronics and the music, that's what keeps me uh, sane. If I didn't have this stuff, I would go completely nuts. I would be compl totally depressed, have no goals, nothing to look forward to. So that's a little window into kind of why I'm, uh, I do this stuff. You know, if I was healthy, I would be working a job and I wouldn't have time to be thinking and doing this much stuff. Just, you just can't. You know, when you're working, it, it consumes, it takes a lot out of you to work a full-time job. Anyway, that's my story. Wish me luck. Send me good vibes and good thoughts as far as this trigger point thing goes. I could really use some relief. 
I really could. And and the way I'm feeling is like, you know, psychologically is like, well, we've been through this uh, COVID lockdown thing, and I, uh, for a while, we were we were writing and doing these concerts, and then I switched over into electronic mode, and I'm I'm really itching to play again. I want to finish the BP nine thousand. And I want to write some more, and I want to get out and do some outdoor music days. So my plate is full. All right, you guys, I'll see you soon. Peace.